Okay, so um, just going through the agenda, do we want to make sure, um, let's discuss the minutes. Any questions about the minutes from the last meeting? So we're calling the meeting to order, Gary, at 9.05, okay. Okay. And I make a motion, we accept the minutes. I'll second it. Okay, so move. Okay, going forward. Um, the discussion on the IHZ tax incentive zone. Um, was there any information, Tim, uh, related to the WCI meeting that um, would shed any more light on this thing? Yeah, so I guess um, items two and three are really kind of blended into one conversation, which is by far going to be the, the you know the meat of the meeting. I don't I think it'll be a relatively short meeting, but so just for everybody's edification. Um, you know, the incentive housing zone tax incentive is due. I'm going to, what if I take this off so they can hear Please you? Please do. Okay. <laughs> All right. The incentive housing zone tax incentive is um, up for renewal in, uh, in, you know, a couple of weeks, middle, middle mid-December. Yep. And I think it's just worth taking a minute to review why we did it um, and what it is. I'll go through the detail. But um, the Planning and Zoning Commission has had an incentive housing zone for now, I'm going to say six, seven years. All right. So it's something that coincides with a lot of the different things that we've tried to do as a town in order to take an uh, spur activity on the lower part of the hill. The geography of the incentive, the incentive housing zone is for the most part, the lower part of the hill. It, it spreads a little bit out to North and South County, but it basically is the area around the train station where we're saying, we'd love to see that type, that area, up, you know, updated, just rejuvenated, because we've been saying for decades, you know, the up, uptown is doing very well. The lower part of the hill, or what the people refer to as downtown, is, is, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful to anybody, but it's just not as vibrant as the uptown. Uptown has been completely done with private money. Landlords have taken and invested in their businesses and grown their properties. The lower part of the hill is, is it needs a little bit more, uh, you know, of a, of a boost. So. The town put the incentive housing zone in place to take and bring in some um, affordable housing. So any project that would be built in the lower part of the hill would have certain you know, market rate housing, housing units and a certain percentage of affordable housing units. Affordable housing is, is, uh, is determined by a federal calculation that um, you know, in, in towns like Wallingford, given our demographic profile, you know, affordable housing rents are not all that different than market rate rents. Right. All right. So it's it's to me it's, it's something that strengthens, you know, the the uh, the town center. Obviously, the town uh, the planning and zoning commission felt strongly about it, so they established the zone. Well, after several years, no activity in the zone. So you start saying, okay, what can we do to try to stimulate some activity? Um, you know, being very cognizant of the fact that. You know, all of those properties are privately owned. So if you, if landlords, you know, aren't interested in doing anything, they're not going to do it. It's, it's totally up, up to them. Um, there are certain sites that would lend themselves to nice development projects, but in every case, there's multiple owners that would make up the size of one feasible site. So it's a matter of the biggest issue has been property assembly, and we knew that. We know that to this day. We've known it in the past, but we're still still saying let's. Let's see if we, what we can do as a as a municipality to try to stimulate interest and activity. I will say that interest on developers' parts. Um, you know, our former uh, town planner Casey Hand and I used to tease, saying that we've worn out a pair of shoes walking developers around the lower part of, of uh, Center Street, um, up and down the rail rail line, down to Parker. You know, back on, on North Colony. Um, so the developers are interested. The issue has become that um, or has been property assembly first and foremost, which means we have to get multiple property owners together on the same page that say we want to take and sell our properties into a development project. And the other thing is the, the financial feasibility of those projects, those potential projects. So government, as we all know, we've got two tools. We've got taxation and we've got regulation. I mean, it's really the only tools that we have in our toolbox. So uh, the incentive housing zone is the regulation part, and we've got a very attractive regulation, we feel. So 
economic development said, let's let's put um, let's use the other tool, taxation, to see if we can't stimulate some interest. So sorry for the long backdrop, but I thought it was worth reviewing before we go forward and, and you know discuss renewing the, the incentive. I, I, well, that, was that question that came up based on what your comments, which are, you know, we had a little discussion on the last meeting. I think we all felt that, you know, trying to get somebody to pull these people together and then look at the financial outlook. We're talking about like, you know, a financial planner type person that could, for some people, depending on where they are in their positions in life, own these properties. Um, that was one. One idea that came out, and the other one was expanding the zone, as you're saying, Tim, to go north, uh, uptown more. But then when you said that about uptown, I was just curious. You know, we had something put together, and I'm just wondering what the update is with the Natale problem. I haven't seen anything really happen with the Kaplan area. Um, are they sitting back on it? Is it moving forward? Is, are they waiting for something else to happen? You're going in and out a little bit, Gary. So, but I think it's the Dean Tally property. Yeah, I was asking whether whether that that was a project I thought that was moving forward that had some housing and retail and so forth, and and it was going to move forward. Um, it hasn't happened. Is there right. a reason, or is it just I remember? I would I would defer to Vincenzo Dean Tally, but I will say that um, he has received the, the uh, appropriate approvals to take. Um, his building on Center Street, uh, many of us know it as the old police station, uh, and put residential housing on the second floor. So convert the offices to residential. So I think the ball is in his court. He has a bigger master plan for doing something on um, Wallace Avenue. Um, so, but I really feel at this point is that the, uh, he's not waiting for us. I think he's received the approvals he needs to get going. Um, and it, it may be, maybe he's just sitting it out for a while. I think the same thing is with the uh, 50 South Main Street, which is uh, owned by John Hall. Right. Uh, he had the approval several years ago to convert that building into residential. Um, the condition was that he put a, a small retail facility, you know, on the Center Street side of that lot because it's kind of an alley you can get in from South Main, um, and then you can also enter that property from Center Street. Years ago, Highlands Bakery was at that uh, the mouth of that driveway. So there's room there for another little uh, retail spot. Uh, so John's got the necessary approvals, but um, has opted not to do anything with it at this particular point in time. So, um, you know, those are those are two projects that you know the town has is done what uh, what has been asked. I think, frankly, I will say work has worked very cooperatively with those particular landowners. And um, now it's it's uh, when the landowners are ready, um, you know, they can they can start. So. Well, my only concern was if we, if we decide to do anything differently, are people sitting back waiting for us to do something? But they certainly have the approvals right now um, to do whatever they need to do. So um, I guess in a two-part question, number one, do we want to move, we want to keep the, the program in place? My gut would tell me, given the other incentives, that we want to keep the program going so we have something in our toolbox. But secondly, if we decide to expand it, um, are we expanding it because there's opportunities up there to pull those people together that uh, will allow us to get some things going? Or are those things already on the table and we have no need to expand it because that's already working? But they're not qualified, apparently, for this IHZ zone. Correct. That, those, both of those projects that we've mentioned um, are not in the incentive housing zone. Yeah. All right. But yeah, from Anthony Rose that you know, we're putting it out there and, and you know somebody sitting back saying, okay, hey, wait a minute, I'll wait until they expand it and then I'll move. Yeah, I, I mean neither one of them have approached me and said that the reason they're not doing it is because you know they, they're not receiving a and you know a, a tax advantage. I mean I think both of those projects will happen when the property owners are ready to make them happen. So. And again, that's that's after, you know, um, frankly, elongated discussions and, you know, frankly, very cooperative uh, meetings with planning and zoning yep. uh, to especially on the hall property to allow that uh, because the regulation says it needs to be a mixed use development. 
So 50 South Main Street, you know, um, on its face could not be all residential. Um, but John Hall said that, you know, the market is for residential, but the compromise was, all right, then, then build the equivalent of retail space on the mouth of the driveway again. And then that would become, you know, the, the, the compromise. So now it's, it's not mixed use in one building, but it's mixed use on the site, which I thought was a, a fantastic compromise on planning and zoning's part. And a lot of work went into that by Casey Hander, former town planner, but uh, Mr. Hall just hasn't, uh, you know, acted on it at this point. So, so okay. I feel make it. Do you have a question? Tim, it seemed to me that um, one of the reasons that John told me that he wasn't doing it is because he couldn't find the appropriate um, either restauranteur to go into a, a restaurant or, you know, a commercial whatever right i mean that's what his his drawback was that he he really couldn't find a someone to you know occupy that space that is correct yep yeah so um if you when you go down center street in the mouth of that driveway right behind the post office you'll see you know that the sign that said you know for lease right uh, to be built is you know now overgrown with brush and, and so that tells you how long that's been there um, but yes, he, he's been unable to secure a tenant for that. But uh, and maybe I should reach out to him again. But uh, you know, he's he's gone quiet. I haven't heard from him in quite some time. So you know, maybe maybe I should reach out just to say hello and and uh, and check on the status of uh, of his project. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. My my only concern is, uh, I guess, as I said, twofold. Um, one, Tim, I don't know what your position is, but I would assume that we want to we up the program have it available uh, then the second step is to expand it and does it look like I mean, it's such a small town does it look like we expanded it to give the opportunity for those people to town to take it down still having some problems with your audio uh gary you're kind of going in and out a little bit so all right but you're, you're, i think what you're saying is i think what you're saying is um uh, you know, possibly just expand the geography to include the top of the hill? Well, that's something that you brought up, right? To to expand the property, the zone. Right. And I'm saying if we say we want to keep the incentive program just as it is, do, that's fine and we move forward and keep it there in our toolbox. But if we expand it, do we give the impression that we're expanding it just to let those people take advantage of it? Already been approved. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you, that's a very good point. <laughs> um, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm not for giving people incentives. <laughs> if it moves a project forward, that's what it's all about. Um, so, you know, six one half dozen the other. If you want to move a project forward and they're sitting on it, we offer an additional incentive. Does that get it going quicker? I'm not sure. I don't know how to read that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Is Gary still talking about the the hall property and the potentially taking, yeah, the I think the issue with the either of those is that an incentive wouldn't change them. I think money is absolutely no issue with them. So they're not trying to they're not doing something um, that they don't want to do because of paying taxes or what have you. I think that they're just. I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's that they're they need to be incentivized. I agree. Yeah, well, I think I'm not against incentives. I'm just saying I don't think that's sure. the thing. I think what this discussion is is um, uh, brought up is that you know it's, it's maybe it's time that I reach out to John Hall and Vincenzo and just Dean Natale and just say, hey guys, just want to say hello. What's up? Uh, I'll re reaffirm that you know they're not waiting for the town or any any committee from the town or commission from the town that um, that you know what they've they've paused their projects because of you know um, whatever issues or you know decisions on their side that it's nothing on our side. I'll reaffirm that. I'm, I'm very comfortable and confident that that is the case, but that's okay. I'll call it. Uh, then then I would say Tim that uh, rather than letting the, the program expire that we re-up it uh, to keep the program in place right. and dive a little bit deeper into why it is moving forward. 
we had a really good discussion the last meeting. And I think we all agree, you know, trying to get these people to group together opportunities is probably the biggest problem. Yeah, I'll remind the committee that when we put this together, um, and just let me go through the mechanics of it so it's all fresh in our minds, but it is by far, by far the most generous tax incentive that uh, I think this town has ever seen, frankly. Uh, it is a five-year tax incentive. So, um, and I know you all know that we have some tax incentives that last seven years, but the thing is that the money, is there's more money forgiven in the five years than there typically would be over a seven-year project, just by way the way it's structured. So the premise is that a developer comes in, the threshold for um, uh, being eligible for the incentive is a million dollars spent. All right, so that this we did that so that you know no, someone's not going to come to us and say, well, I put new siding on my building, I put new windows, a new boiler, I put a roof on, and I, I should you know I've renovated two apartments above my pizza place, and now I want a tax incentive. This is for this is you know project driven larger projects. So it's a million dollar threshold. The assumption is that um, there are properties that are assembled in order to make the project scalable. Um, and that once those properties are assembled, um, that a developer is going to take and, and frankly scrape the site and start over. All right. So that being the case, um, the tax incentive uh, it was built five year incentive. The first two years of the tax incentive, whatever tax is being collected on the property now goes to zero. Now, you recall that when we went to the town council and said going to zero, that was not something that was, you know, welcomed with open arms. That was a, that was a you know, a, a good sound discussion. But the idea is if, if you, in, in your, in your mind's eye, pick a, pick a site, pick the, you know, corner of Hall and North Colony, where the CVS was looking to go years ago. All right, there were four property owners on that site. So if those four property owners got together and said, okay, we're going to join arms, we're all going to sell. All right, they, so they sell it into a project, the developer buys the site, and then that developer scrapes the site. But before they, they, they scrape the site, they're going to come before the town with an incentive housing zone project. Now, that would probably be contingent upon them even purchasing the site. So the way it'll work is, you know, that developer may purchase the site contingent upon them getting approval for an incentive housing zone project. All right, so they come before the town and then we go through the incentive housing zone approval process and then they get approval. Well, the tax incentive doesn't start until the approval is in hand. So once a developer has an approval, in order to get that approval, they have to have building plans, they have to have the number of residential units, they have to have the entire site basically scoped out. Right. All right, engineered, scoped out, we, the town is going to approve exactly what they know it's going to look like, et cetera. All right, so the, the clock starts once they get the approval. Then they have two years to build it. All right, so we, we bake this in the cake because we don't want someone buying it, scraping it, and having the site sit there forever. Right. right? So you, you, you have to have the, build, the thing built in two years or you are charged retroactively for the taxes. All right, so first two years, no tax collected whatsoever. And the premise of that is that if they scrape the site, they're not generating any revenue anymore. They're not getting any rental income. So no income, we're saying, hey, you're doing something that we really want you to do. So our skin in the game is, we're not gonna charge you taxes because you're not generating any rental income. Well. It shouldn't take two years to build it because keep in mind the clock starts after they have approvals in hand. So they already have everything. So two years is generous and we know it's generous. We did it deliberately. The next two years, years three and four, they only pay 25% of the taxes that would now be generated on the site. Now keep in mind, it's, it's a new site at this point and that 25% is still significantly more than we would be paying or collecting on the sites as they sit today. All right, so, and again, it's a generous timeline. It's a generous timeline, and we did that deliberately so that we're saying, okay, so you you take and you build the site out, 
in, within two years, and again, it shouldn't take that long, then you've got to take and, and uh, lease it up. We know that you know building it and leasing it are going to be happening, happening simultaneously. Um, so you, you lease it up by the end of the year four. Which, frankly, they'll have it leased up much sooner than that. Um, year five, they pay 50 percent. All right, of, of the the taxable the tax now on this new site, right, at a much higher a much higher rate. And then in year six, you know, they're off and running. So those those things were built in to drive activity. If the builder falls behind in any of those timelines, we ha we have a clawback provision in there that says all bets are off. You owe us all the taxes that we would have gained if we hadn't scraped the site. Right. That's that's how we constructed it. So, given what you just said, Tim, um, reflecting back on what we said about the Italian and the other, those two projects come even close to a million. I don't say again, Gary. Those two projects that we spoke of, the Natale and the other gentleman. Yeah. Would those two projects, either one of those, come to a million dollars? Um. Probably not, right? Well, it could be pretty close. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I'm just curious. Pretty close. And 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 Mr. Di Natale has said the master plan project to take the, uh, you know, what we we all call the chicken coops on on Wallace. Uh, Avenue, and yep. you know, wrap, wrap residential housing around that. So yeah, that that would exceed a million, I'm sure. I All think right, well, there's yeah. that possibility. Yeah. I was just curious about the dollar amount on that. Yeah. So, you know, given the generous plan, which you know, spike very generous, still haven't got any newcomers to it. Um, I guess it just it just it will continue to raise the question. Um, a, I, first, first and foremost, yes, we should renew the plan. But what, what else can we do with the plan as we go forward? Um, so I guess the two-step process: do we want to vote on continuing the plan um, and at least getting it onto the agenda so that we don't lose it? And then we can always do revisions. I would assume while we have the plan in place to try to get. We'd have to go before the town council to make changes. In the right. We have to go before the council to get it, you know, even reinstated or renewed. Right. But if I can, we always, throw, we always throw you in front of that bus. Sorry. I said we always throw you in front of that bus when it happens. That's fine. Uh, if, if I may, just add perspective. So you know, we find ourselves, and I'm sure you're all thinking of this the same way I have. So um, we haven't had any takers. So if it, if it was more generous. Would we have takers? And, and I'll, I'll, in my opinion, we wouldn't. It's not the incentive that's stopping the activity. The incentive is a, is a placeholder for when you know there's a site sold uh, that it may stimulate. You know, it, it may make the projects work. You know that we've done those exercises on every one of those those three sites. Um, we know what the pro formers are. We know what it's going to take to generate. We know what we can what can be built there to maximize the site. Uh, we've done you know revenue projections we've done rent roll projections we've done you know building costs we know all that um uh, so i don't think you know making it less is going to do anything making it more i don't think it's going to do anything it's just it's there yeah. waiting for the right opportunity in my opinion so. yeah and 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 to that point i think the the best thing that that we could do is try to create the inertia behind it i think the uh, the terms last time we spoke was energy uh capital and vision uh, vision right so um I, I think if there is a way to broker those uh three characteristics into the same uh, idea uh, that you have a, a chance to find somebody who could take advantage of it i i think it's a fantastic incentive I just don't think that it's, uh, you know, maybe we could do a better job promoting it. You know, people need to know it's, it's, it's got to spark that idea. And hey, that's a great idea. And you bring this person and that person together. And, you know, that's uh, that's how these things, I think, kind of get started um, to, to have it out there and just wait for the right opportunity to find it is going to be just an awful long time. Well, just. Yeah. Just, just to remind everybody that um, so the we, we studied three sites specifically. One was the um, corner of Quinnipiac and South Colony. Yep. That's the plaza where um, you know Stella's is and Rebus is and, and through there. 
and it includes the properties along uh, Quinnipiac Street up to the tracks. Um, uh, so uh, that property has recently been purchased by a developer from North Haven, uh, a fellow named uh, Carl Davia. And our vision was that maybe someone would buy that site, scrape it, and start over. Uh, Mr. Davia, it is, it is not his intention to do that. Um, he is going to breathe that life and energy into the site. Uh, he did take down the old T-Bones building, um, and he says he's going to put that building back up. Um, so, and we have regular dialogue. So, um, um, you know, when he puts that building back up, if it meets that threshold, um, you know, along with some other, you know, site improvements there, you know, he may qualify. So we'll keep that, certainly keep that in mind. But his vision was not to scrape it and start over, and he was well aware of the tax incentives as was the previous owner. So I had met with the previous owner. Um, that was frankly the most likely site because it was owned by you know, one entity. It was three partners, but they were all in the same family. It's one entity prior to them selling to Mr. Davia. So no, the vision for that is common and it's, it's probably not going to be that you know, uh, residential, mixed use residential development that we initially envisioned. Now in your mind's eye, just go right across the street to the property that's owned by uh, Gallagher's, um, and then there's another property, um, and the gentleman's name escapes me right now, but he's the uh, owner of Amity Safe and Lock. I've met with both of those entities. So that is a, that is a site that's bordered by the railroad tracks, Quinnipiac Street, and um, South Cherry Street. All right, so two, two sites, two different property owners. Both are well aware of the incentive. I've met with both of them, and they're aware of it. So if they ever decide, to take and join arms, and uh, they're, they're aware that you know, that incentive is there. And the uh, uh, the Gallagher property it, uh, is, is actually actively for sale. So uh, the other property, to the best of my knowledge, is not. The third property we looked at was the corner of North Colony and Hall. Um, there were four property owners there. Um, I have reached out to four. I have sat down, uh, and this, this goes back a ways, but I've sat down with two. Uh, the other two, frankly, were not um, interested in sitting down, even though I made the offer. So I, you know, I've got to be somewhat delicate because I don't want people saying, "Ah, oh, that guy from the town is trying to get me to sell my property," and he's pressing. You know, it's like I've got to, I've got to tiptoe a little bit, but my goal is to inform them as to what the potential is for their property. And the way I approached it was, you know, I mean, if we have information that we've worked on and performance that we've built and we didn't share it with you, I think you may be upset with us. So, you know, I went forward and, and shared it that way. So um, to your point, Anthony, I think those who care to know, um, you know, are informed at this point and, um, you know, we'll, we'll take it from there. But it certainly yeah. um, never, never hurts to remind uh, you know, we've got, uh, we're using now the, from the desk of Joe column on a pretty yep. regular basis that reaches more Wallingford residents than uh, that's the target audience for that. And as everybody knows, we're working on our social media campaign uh, with our, our team from Quinnipiac University, which should be launched, um, a soft launch in December. I think, uh, you know, uh, January, February, we're looking for a, a splash. So, Anthony, you, you've been kind enough to work on that committee um and make guest appearances on that committee <laughs> and it's, so maybe that's something that we can blast out that way because the real target audience there is not only the property owners but it's, it's developers right so and that's how we reach those folks yeah i think under the right circumstance the right developer teaming up with the property owners you know just some there's a uh, there's a plan in there somewhere i just i just don't know what it is i just think you need to to bring the right people together yeah so that uh, promoting it wouldn't be a bad idea. You guys have heard me say this probably way too many times, but um, you know the, the the lower part of the hill doesn't look that much different now than it did when I was a student at Holy Trinity School. And you know, from the third floor of that school, you look down the hill, and you can see everything. That's it. It's one of the most beautiful vantage points in, in the upper in town. Is the third floor of Holy Trinity School, um, and I was a student there over 50 years ago, let me put it that way. It's in it, the lower part, it doesn't look that much different, which I, I think is just, um, it's disappointing because it, it has not changed with time. So that's why we've had the energy about trying to do something to, you know, plant the seed corn so we can make something happen. But, 
you know, willing and, and uh, cooperative property owners are, are critical. I mean, their property. Came out of the, what came out of the discussion. What came out of the discussion with Wallingford Center? Anything, Tim? Yeah. So um, yes, it was. It was. Uh, um, it was. It was a great conversation. Um, a lot of a lot of input from a number of people as to you know, the idea is, you know, should we extend this incentive housing zone, you know, up the hill? If so, what would it look like? Um, and um, as far as the incentive housing zone uh, incentive was concerned, there was really not any energy to to uh, bring it up the hill because the scope of the projects along Center Street, other than the two that we previously discussed, for the most part, are, are pretty small. Nonetheless, small is what makes Center Street work, right? So it gravitated into a lengthy conversation about, you know, how can we help small business? Um, I did take the opportunity to share with them that the state of Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development came out with a $5,000 grant program. We've pushed that out through email lists. Uh, Kathy Lilly, who's the new executive director of WCI, has pushed that out several times just to make sure people are aware of it. It is, in fact, a grant. So if you qualify and the qualification criteria is not overly burdensome, um, uh, you know, you get 5,000 bucks and you, you don't have to pay it back, but you can, you know, you can use it to help sustain yourself through the winter months. Um, we use the opportunity to, to share that there's uh, new loan programs that came out of the Small Business Development Center that uh, Community Investment Corporation is actually administering. Um, that that's a $5,000 loan program, but it's a loan, and and um, there are criteria. Uh, but that's been out for a week and a half, and they've already put the brakes on it because the uh, application volume has been so. That's statewide, so the application volume, both of them are statewide has just been so robust that they can't keep up with the application. So we, we use it to say, how can we help other businesses? And frankly, the loudest um, the loudest suggestion in the room is was to help the businesses do business. It's, it's doing business that made them successful before COVID. It's doing business that's going to sustain them throughout COVID. So um, Kathy Lilly is off to a great start, by the way. Um, is working on uh, giving training classes and offering training classes at no cost for all types of internet marketing um, you know, programs. So the bottom line is help them generate business as opposed to pay them because the business isn't there. That was the genesis of the conversation. So um, I, I would say at least going forward since we're up against a deadline, uh, we probably should go on whether we want to keep the incentive program in place. No, we should move that uh, along on the agenda. Do you want to take a motion on that or is a motion? Motion we vote on it. Can that we continue the incentive program? He needs to say it. One second. Is Tim is or? No, I didn't. What is he? We're voting in. Um, I just the motion is to vote. is to vote on uh, maintaining the same uh, incentive program. Oh, yeah. To renew the incentive the incentive housing zone property tax incentive. Right. We'll we'll formalize it in the uh, in the minutes. But thank you. I'll I'll I'll, I'll second it. I I. I. Hey, Tim. Yes, throw you under the bus again, or you can let us know when it's going to be on the agenda. Yeah, I will uh, get a letter off to the town council, and then we'll we'll, uh, we'll ask for them. You know, in the meantime, I will um, I will call the property owners in the upper part of the hill that we had discussed. Just to again, a, as a I call them wellness calls these days. Just a wellness call. Hey, how's it going? You know. <laughs> Um, no activity. I haven't seen any activity. You know, what, what, what's your vision? Uh, and again, the, the big thing is to confirm that they're not waiting for us in any way. I mean, us meaning town hall, any department in town hall, um, that they have deliberately, um, you know, put their projects on hold. Um, and I think the, the other thing is, let's put it, you know, once assuming that we do get the approval to move it forward, 
taking into account what we've been talking about in the last two meetings, um, as, as well as, you know, Anthony mentioned and promotion wise and everything else, to kind of dive into this thing a little bit deeper and figure out what we can do. Put people together to make it work. I still think there's, I still think there's a need. We all talked about for, uh, properties down in the lower end of Center Street. There. There's probably opportunities, but the other, uh, the, the owners, the current owners, um, there's got to be a way that uh, somebody could look at it and say, is it a legacy thing? Is it a will? You know, what is it? Uh, be able to move those things forward. Yeah, individually. Um, you know, those that I've spoken to, um, you know, they're very nice. <laughs> yeah, I understand. And just say, uh, you know, it's, it's it's personal decisions. It's uh, a lot of it has to do with, you know, a particular point in, in time in your life. But keep it in mind that, you know, when it comes to assembly, which any developer and every developer that Casey Hand and I walked through it with um, said very, very succinctly, there is no way that a developer is going to get involved with trying to assemble property. It is an absolutely, an absolute losing proposition because you, know, you just. Well, and we ought to drag somebody out of retirement down in Florida to we both know from the Rotary Club. Who likes to do this. <laughs> <laughs> the property owners themselves really have to have to join arms and say, "Okay, I'm ready to come to market." Otherwise, the marketplace is, they've been, you know, they've been burned by that so many times. You know, picture, picture the corner of Hall and, and North Colony. You have four separate property owners. So if three said yes and agreed on pricing, the fourth, the fourth guy's price just, just tripled, right? Because he knows that, they, he or she knows that they're the missing link. And, they're, and developers are smarter than that. You know, they're not going to do that. So um, it's a matter of, if I, if I could introduce four what willing property owners, um, or in the case of Quinnipiac Street, uh, two willing property owners to a developer, uh, the conversation can start. But at this point, we don't have either. So, all right. Do you want to move it to the discussion on the uh, exit interview? Yeah. You know, just if I may, Gary, just one last piece. Um, you'll see that in this month's. Um, um, from the desk of Joe column that'll be published in the Wallingford magazine. You'll see it, it's about the uh, brothers parking lot. And there is a, uh, um, I don't, I don't have any reason to believe it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a large group, but there is, there is a group that's trying to say, listen, I, we don't think that should be a parking lot. We think it should be a park. I saw the article in the journal. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that column addresses why it needs to be a parking lot. And, Sure. These development projects that we're talking about, um, if any one of them was to come to fruition, um, and of course the naysayers say, ah, you guys are pipe dreamers, and none of them are going to ever happen. Uh, well, it's, it's always easy to say that, right? So, um, uh, but you know, we're trying to strategically, you know, you know, uh, plan, you know, that lower part of the hill, and, and who knows? It may be a long time before any of it happens, if ever. But you can't not have the the, the, the sight lines. So the only way that when we did out that project with the Department of Tra State, uh, Connecticut Department of Transportation, about the feasibility on each of the sites that we, the three sites that we've been talking about, the only way that those things worked is when we changed the zoning regulation to allow more density on each of the sites. More density means more apartments. It means more rent roll. That's the only way that they cost could cost justify whether these would work. That said, more density meant less parking. Less parking means, well, the people have to park someplace. And so we went from one and a half parking spaces per unit that was that was in the zoning regulation down to one. So any unit that has two parking, two cars, you know, they're gonna need someplace to park, and that's that brother's parking lot. So we need that as part of our strategic visions for the lower part of the hill. Yep. The other thing is that um, you'll see more conversation because I'm trying to keep the conversation uh, you know, growing in terms of uh, frequency, and that's the old railroad station. You know, historic building owned by the town of Wallingford. We've seen throughout the state of Connecticut that historic railroad stations have become centers of activity. Um, you know, Naugatuck has got a beautiful restaurant in, in theirs. There's, there's several that have got, you know, the Wallingford facility could be 
It could be a wine bar, it could be a pizza and bourbon bar, and I think it can accommodate easily two or even three small businesses. So that if that when that railroad station, hopefully, we continue to pursue that it can be repurposed. I personally feel it's one of the least um, used, utilized assets in our in our lower part of our hill. That could, that be, could something, be a nice drawing card for that. Something so special. All right. Well, how many parking spaces are around the railroad station? <laughs> There's none. So we need the brothers parking lot if that vision is to come true. So just, you know, be aware that um, as conversations come up about that parking lot, because based on this conversation, you may hear some that, you know, the parking lot is, is pretty is pretty essential to seeing any of these visions, you know, come to fruition. Again, the naysayers say, ah, none of that will ever happen. You guys are pipe dreamers. But I'd rather I'd rather have a, a vision than than sit. And, and, and say nothing will ever happen. I don't think that's the way we're wired. So I just want to. We, we don't need another park down there right now. I don't they think can't so. maintain the one up on North Main Street. They're not going to maintain yeah. uh, the exit interview program. Do you want to move on, Gary? Sure. What's up? All right. So um, uh, I, I, I am well aware, um, as a staff here in the office, well aware that. It is this committee's desire to, to uh, you know, rejuvenate that. We did it back in the spring uh, without any, if I may say, uh, without any resounding, you know, outcomes. But we wanted to, we wanted to resume it, or you wanted to resume it. Um, but it is, it's just our, um, it's just been staff uh, work volume in the office, a very different type of work volume, uh, that we have not gotten to putting those lists together yet. So. I just have it on here because I didn't want you to think we forgot about it. Uh, but um, I think it's probably something that would be um, more feasible after the first of the year. Um, so anyway, I'll keep it on there. Assuming you want to, you want to continue to keep it on there. Well, I mean, I, I you know, we didn't get much of a um, response on the previous one. Um, I wouldn't put it high on our priority list. But I think the phone calls were interesting nonetheless. So probably keep it on the agenda. Let's take a look at what comes up on the listing. Uh, and if the listing turns out to be less than interesting, then we could always drop the program. All right. I will say that Lynn spends a fair amount of time, you know, taking you know, when you go through the disconnect list, and then again we've fallen behind, admittingly, but um, if you take a look at the electric disconnect list. Uh, then you've got to, you really got to, you got to massage it. You got to cull through it. Otherwise, we'd be sending you guys on, on you'd be making calls to, you know, yeah. landlords who just got tenants, right? It was disconnected from, you know, so and so, but that's the landowner that just got disconnected because a new tenant just moved into the space. Mm -hmm. So we go through and she cross checks and cross pollinates these lists to give you something that's, you know, more direct. Uh, and it just, it takes some time and, you used the word priority, Gary. Um, you know, things have been uh, uh, disrupted that way. And this, this is uh, not hit the, the list yet. So, All right. We want to talk about the next meeting. I assume it's going to be in January. I, th I think January would be um, a good time. Yep. Um, let's. I have to flip the calendar here. If I could suggest maybe, Gary, sometime during the week of the 18th. Um, okay. I don't think there's any need to meet before the January EDC meeting. Um, okay. Um, probably meet before the February EDC meeting. So. December, January. Okay, here we are. How's Wednesday the 20th? Assuming you're not going to be at the inauguration, Tim. Um, <laughs> could try to put it in sometime in that week of the 18th. Um, I would look at the 21st or, or 20, the following week. 21st is fine by me. About Anthony or Rose, is that okay for you guys? Fine with me. And it's fine with me. Assuming uh, we're still going to be remote at that point, let's just, I don't know if this timing is good for everybody, but certainly 
try to get it in around the same time frame on the uh, 21st. All right, so the next meeting will be scheduled at 9 a.m. on January 1, 21, 21. Oh. Sound good? good? Perfect. So it's your job to uh, end the meeting. <laughs> What's that, Gary? I said, Rosa, it's your job to end the meeting. You have to. You have to. Oh, I make a motion we end the meeting, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Yeah, I second it. Thank you. Stay safe, small groups. All right. Very good. Great. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Okay. Enjoy. Take care. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye.